Hi, my name is Greg and I live in Sarasota, Florida. I wanted to share my ideas about why we should trust the results of the November 3rd presidential election. Two of my reasons have to do with the diversification of the inputs to the election and the diversity of the results. Like a lot of people in Florida, I like to play around in the stock market and every financial advisor I have ever had told me and emphasized how important it is to have a diversified portfolio to get the best results. I think the same thing holds true in our national elections. We got 50 states. In the last presidential election, 26 of those states were run by Republican governors, 24 were run by Democratic governors. Two of the tightest states, Georgia and Arizona, were run by Republican governors. Each state had their own rules about the absentee ballots and polling places and the timing requirements for the election. So the fact that it was so fragmented and broken up gives me a lot of confidence that there was no funny business or manipulation of the results. Like a lot of other people in Florida, I like to watch the Tampa, Ray, Tampa Bay race and watch them play baseball. One thing that drives me crazy in baseball is when they bring in a pitcher and he walks a couple of guys and then and then there's a pass ball and then there's an error and then there's a cheap infill hit and then somebody hits a home run and before you know it, you're behind five to nothing. In cases like that, the manager comes in and he replaces the pitcher. He doesn't replace the whole team. He doesn't take out every guy on the team. That's because one person was not doing a good job. Now, in this election, with the president acting so crazy, sending out all these nutty tweets and making inflammatory statements, the voters decided he wasn't up to the job, and I agreed with that. But the Republicans gained seats in the House, and they held on in the Senate, held on to the majority in the Senate, despite the fact that it was a pretty rough map for them where they're defending a lot more seats than the Democrats were. So the fact that the voters discriminated between who was doing a good job and who wasn't, that gives me a lot of confidence. Those are both kind of academic arguments. So let me try to put a more human face on it. In the run-up to the election, the president was really running scared. It didn't seem like he had any confidence he was going to win. He kept talking about the election being rigged and that he was going to lose. He never laid out a plan for the next four years. Didn't really talk about his accomplishments, just talked about who he was mad at. It's not a good look. Since he lost, he's been in hiding in Mar-a-Lago playing golf, hasn't had any public appearances or even spoken about the results of the election, won't even admit who won. The courts are laughing his cases out of the courtroom. General Milley, the head of the Joint Chiefs, felt he had to lay down a marker and read the Riot Act and say he was not going to participate in a coup. That scared me. Not about General Milley, about, but, but about Trump. In addition, religious leaders like Reverend Jeffers in Texas and the Pope have said that they acknowledge that Biden won the election. That's good enough for me. Joe Biden is probably the luckiest guy to ever win an election. He gets in and a week later, there's a, two fantastic looking COVID vaccines with 95% effectiveness. The stock market is zooming. Makes me feel pretty good about 2021. Now, if only we can get the Tampa Bay Rays back in the World Series, we'll do better next year.